good morning to all of you uh, today is chairman professor prabhu professor rm singh professor sk sharma dr rk singh dr rakshit the previous directors dr saidas dr op yadav uh, i see among the gathering many other distinguished uh, uh, scientists and uh, uh, staff members of uh, the directorate which has now become the institute and uh, dr ml jaad from semet uh, distinguished uh, participants ladies and gentlemen Uh, today is uh, an event which is uh, of great relevance to any institute particularly from the point of view of not only having introspection but also in the context of uh, looking forward as to what should be the uh, our future approach in terms of achieving newer heights so i would like to congratulate you for whatever has been achieved much has been said with regard to the, the program which perhaps uh, was one of the oldest uh, crop improvement programs to begin with uh, our country's all india crop improvement program is uh, known globally as one of the most successful programs and uh, we started with mage so it is the right time to also recognize the contributions of the the coordinators the first coordinator dr anal dhawan dr jovinder singh uh, dr anand singh uh, there were also people like dr mukherji dr sk vasal he was uh, that time contemporary two years senior to me but we were doing phd together and uh, then dr said so and others Uh, we we do appreciate whatever has been done and achieved uh, the history as has been told is of 55 years uh, it has uh, grown uh, step by step uh, from the coordinated program to that of directed of mage research in 1994 and then uh, as mage institute in 2015 so i always believe that the change is uh, uh, must for any growth for any institution and uh, there had been changes so we should uh, not feel bad that we became institute little later but maybe you had uh, sound foundations of uh, very eminent predecessor uh, researchers to begin with having said this i also now feel that uh, time has come when maize has to be seen as our future crop in the country we had uh, green revolution through wheat and rice uh, that green revolution was for uh, household uh, food security which we need by but now time has come that our major goal of sdg2 relating to zero hunger requires nutritional security and i see among the cereals particularly maize offering great opportunity for having next green revolution in india which will be for nutrition security having said this i also feel that uh, maize is like soya bean a wonder grain soya bean is called as wonder grain but uh, i would say among cereals maize is a wonder grain as well much has been already said so i don't have to repeat that but uh, i would like to say that uh, in our country we have been using this less for food than for other purposes so our first challenge is whether in future we will like to depend on maize as a food crop and that has to be seen in the right context and what should be done to see that it doesn't lose its importance as a food crop uh, 
at this stage also i am happy that uh, much achievements have been uh, already uh, mentioned and uh, i would like to congratulate you rakshit as dr saidas also said uh, that uh, the contribution uh, of your hybrids for the breeder seed requirement has increased also r k singh has uh, lauded those achievements so you need to be congratulated on your foundation day uh, you say you are it is seventh foundation day so you are a young institute it is good to be young because young can achieve and we have great hope in our uh, young generation and uh, what is required is that you need to have a right uh, uh, way forward and uh, you not 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 only change but you should be globally wise and act locally and in that respect uh, let us see where we stand with our uh, global major achievements when and, and many of uh, you know saidas had uh, reflected and uh, op yadav also reflected that uh, and dr s k sharma that uh, uh, we really lagged behind and uh, maybe due to the the kind of uh, understanding at that time of our leaders that uh, probably for country like india we needed uh, a, a, an approach where there is less of dependence on uh, hybrid seed which uh, probably would be difficult or costly and uh, therefore either go for composites or synthetics or three way crosses so maximum we were uh, stuck up uh, at three way cross and at that time i happened to be the deputy director general of crops in fact i was studying in iri though i studied on beat but i worked in maize laboratory because my chairman didn't have any lab of his own being dean dr ab joshi so he had assigned me to dr dhawan so actually i was all the time interacting with dr mukherji dr vasal dr nanan singh and uh, seeing how exciting uh, developments were taking place and the crop is this is the most research crop dr sk sharma has already mentioned starting from those uh, original work using mendel's laws to that of heterosis and then to those jumping genes of barbara mcclintock and uh, all breeding methods got defined around it even in cytogenetics the most research crop is uh, maize uh, with 10 chromosomes uh, we started uh, Uh, making slides with uh, maces. Uh, so I I would not like to go again into those details. Uh, we have come a long way, but when we started reviewing why our maize production and productivity was not increasing, it was stuck up till 2000 around 10 to 12 million ton, and our productivity was not increasing beyond 10 to 12 uh, quintals per hectare. and that time then uh, that that slide which uh, op mentioned uh, gave me uh, a real uh, jolt that while countries like us and even china uh, much more about research in china at that time but uh, i'm sure they benefited from those materials from us that uh, using single cross hybrids they were uh, harvesting more than 7 tons at that time and we were stuck up at 1 ton and uh, then discussed with the scientists we found out that uh, we don't have single cross maize and i said why don't we have single cross maize hybrids why can't we get when they are harvesting and they have this material in us then we talked to the private sector 
private sector said, sir, we can bring it, but there is an issue of piracy and you don't have the plant breeders' rights. So Prabhu, their first right act emerged. So we started with twin approach. One, to start our own hybrid program because the private sector would not bring, they would depend on double cross hybrids or three-way cross hybrids. And uh, therefore we will be always stuck up with the second generation uh, technology. So either we do it ourselves. So we started with, at that time, the new seed policy also had been brought in. And uh, along with that, uh, the uh, hybrid, the special hybrid uh, production program came in. And uh, we said, uh, we have to go with it. I'm glad uh, people like uh, Sai Das and uh, Anand Singh and other breeders and also uh, realized the importance and worked hard. And by 2000, uh, they came up with the single cross maize hybrids. And we also started this uh, uh, draft. And in the record time, we got uh, the PVPR uh, Act uh, approved by the Parliament. I don't think in the history of uh, Parliament you will find uh, an act to be approved in just less than five years' time, from drafting to approval. And at that time, then, uh, private sector also started coming up because they had this plant breeders' right. Uh, and, uh, come up with their own hybrid materials and our own hybrids were there. And uh, then when we reviewed what we found that in one decade's time, uh, things completely changed. We doubled our maize production. And uh, the, the productivity which was stuck up uh, immediately jumped. And now I think I'm told it is around three tons. Uh, Yet, uh, when you compare with the productivity levels of uh, the US, which was at that time seven tons, is now 10 tons. And uh, when you look at uh, other countries in terms of productivity, we are number seven. So when you look at Argentina, I have seven tons. China, six tons. And China had six tons even that time when we were reviewing. And uh, uh, Brazil, again, around 5.7. Indonesia even is higher than us. In Asia, China and Indonesia are the two countries having higher productivity than India. And India is, is still at 3.1. So no doubt at one stage, we feel that we have done great job and achieved. But on the other side, we have miles to go. So when we look at global scenario and compare ourselves, fortunately in area we are number four. That is a good sign. Uh, of course, uh, China has the uh, highest area under male, which is around, uh, I think, 30 uh, million hectare. Uh, we need to also improve our area. So there is an option now, whether to go horizontal or vertical. Recently, we had reviewed through TAS uh, to bridge the yield gaps. And we find that these yield gaps are really quite alarming and need to be addressed and addressed uh, uh, by various states. The, the majority of the states growing rather more than half of the maize produced in the central India, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and Rajasthan. And the area there is almost 80% rent fed. So obviously we have to see whether we can make these gray areas green through maize is one option. Using conservation agriculture approach, uh, using uh, possibilities there are, but we don't have those. So policy support for GM crop like maize. So hybrid, you know, herbicide tolerant maize if is also available, perhaps will make a difference and make a great impact there. Uh, 
So when we see this, I I I I do globally when you look at maize is number one crop among cereals. Uh, many people may possibly not be aware. Uh, it is number one uh, crop producing something like about uh, 1,160 uh, million tons, whereas wheat is number two, which is 765 million ton, and rice is uh, 500 million ton, which is number three. In India, on the contrary, rice number one with 44 million uh, hectare area and production of 120 million ton. Uh, wheat number two with 30 million hectare area and production of 109. I presume that the wheat will be number one soon, taking over rice because you can't afford to continue with that large area. So if from rice area is to be, uh, you know, shifted, then the potential crop is only maize. That's what I see. And uh, whether it is in irrigated or whether it is rent fed, both. Whether it is this Eastern India, whether it is Northeastern states, and whether it is rent fed uh, rice. Rent fed rice has to be on priority replaced first. And that's where again maize has potential. So we have to target our approach also for research relating to these areas. Uh, it was said that uh, we have to improve productivity in, uh, uh, say, irrigated rice wheat system. We have to, already there is policy support. Even Haryana has announced 7,000 rupees per acre for uh, diversification if one will like to grow maize. Third has come forward 10,000 rupees per acre for again diversification. So there are opportunities. And uh, when you look at Bihar, uh, the, the winter maize especially is uh, amazing growth and uh, amazing progress, more than seven ton. So it's not that in India you cannot achieve. And my thinking is that uh, we have to make now maize because the, the use of maize is multifarious. Every part of it has its commercial value and uh, it has tremendous opportunities for livestock sector, uh, whether it is for poultry or for livestock, for feed, it has tremendous opportunities also for industry, starch. It has tremendous opportunities also for now ethanol production, biofuel. And that's another emerging area which we should not uh, lose sight of. And uh, therefore, the, the challenge is to increase the area under maize, uh, which is currently around uh, 10 million hectare and uh, major productivity, which is 30 million ton. So I'll come to this in my last part. But uh, at, at this time, I would like to say that uh, when the growth rate among the cereals is the highest, as was mentioned before, more than 3.5 high years compared to rice and wheat. And when we need to uh, diversify our uh, rice wheat system uh, for which I see tremendous opportunities are there, at least uh, 10 to 15 million tons uh, rice wheat uh, area in the indo gangetic plain has a great option for it. It can also be taken to spring maize. It can be also thought of in winter maize and winter areas and so on. So in, in that regard, I, I look uh, at opportunities by going forward. And going forward, when we reviewed recently, we found that the still area under hybrid coverage in maize is uh, not uh, more than 70%. Why can't we make it 95 or 100% when this is the technology and available with us? Forget about GM maize, 
the current uh, base technology and and the all private sector is interested all multinationals are interested in having made uh, as hybrid program in india and, and making a uh, lot of uh, you know profits so in that respect and and the national system whatever hybrids we have how it can reach the end user the major challenge there again is of policy paralysis that we have been not able to partner with a corporate sector to gain from the achievements in public institutions for hybrid research in most of the crops including vegetables and there you need a more innovative approach because when you just give this technology on few lakhs of rupees to number of people there is no incentive it has to be exclusive licensing maybe not for entire country but for a specific area area wise exclusive licensing can be for 5 6 7 corporate sector and then partnership for sharing the benefits access and benefit sharing about which private sector is willing but i think uh, public sector has not yet been able to come out with clear policies uh, if hybrid had gone to the farmers at that time i will tell you i was that time deputy director general we got a policy decision done that all seeds of the parental seeds of inbred lions and uh, would be made available free of cost to the private sector now when that was done what is the problem that we cannot have partnership with private sector when their involvement is critical for going forward and when public sector institutions are not unable are not able to uh, bridge this gap of uh, higher seed replacement through hybrid seed this is one point the the, the other point is that uh, uh, we have to think in terms of uh, current challenges challenges i have already said increasing productivity uh we cannot lag behind uh, what is our target for the next say uh 2030 by the time sdg has to be met for the nutrition security for mage by 2020 what is our target and in that respect i see uh, that uh, we we need to uh, think in the context of uh, again I, i would say you know when prabhu you were there when we were discussing whether india will achieve 100 million tons of wheat wheat and even professor uh, dr rajaram was saying dr saab it is too ambitious target and we said no we will achieve it though we didn't achieve it by 1995 but we did achieve in 1998 because there were two three drought years otherwise we were on on yeah. on the you know uh, target to achieve that so if you don't have any target if you don't have any goal so maybe on the foundation day you take a decision and in my view there are two ways as i said either you increase area and increase production because the demand is tremendous and your uh, current demand i am told uh, uh, by 2030 would be around 45 million ton for maize why not we think of doubling the maize production now by 2030 which means today you are 30 make it 60 so you meet your demand 45 and you have access either for export or for diverting it for ethanol production us has already diverted it about a decade ago they started their diversion is not only 1% 10% 20% it is now 40% 40% of maize in us 
otherwise maize farmers would not survive and here we are also thinking of doubling farmers income we are thinking of providing incentive and incentive will be only through new opportunities and options and government has come up with a policy of uh, blending ethanol to the level of 20% by next 5 years so who are going to provide that and uh, and our commitment to cop 26 and paris agreement is to uh, reduce our dependence on fossil fuel and therefore we have to go aggressively on renewable energy sources and only sugarcane and maize are the two best options so i see this so so there are two options one is from current 10 million hectare area can you make it 15 million by next 8 years and if that where which way i see north eastern region has great potential uh, rice wheat area has great potential but you would require technology and of course policies i'll come to those and incentives for to the farmer which are already starting so either area you try to increase from 10 to 12 15 million ton then you can continue with your productivity in a slow pace from 3 to 4 ton but i would say you have great potential of increasing productivity uh, because technology is already there it's only an issue of uh, uh, as was rightly said what you need now is a twin, twin pillar approach not only the single pillar of around, around genetic enhancement but uh, the uh, other important pillar around natural resource management good agronomic practices and maybe uh, conservation agriculture and so on so in that context from 3 to 4 rather i would say we go from 3 to 5 tons and if you go to 5 tons then you don't need more area you need area from 10 to 12 million hectare only with 5 ton and 12 million take your 60 just a thought so you have to really now now see where are the best possibilities and what we can do and give a you know blueprint to the government let there be a mission for maize production in india to double the maize production in future and help all states to go towards better natural resource management covid 19 has given that lesson that we cannot continue over exploiting our economic survey of india for last 3 years now telling no doubt we needed green revolution but now when we have enough food people are saying it was over exploitative technology but without that we would have been dependent and eating those red wheats which i used to eat when we were importing 10 million tons of wheat at that time so this is one point but for this you would require public private partnership you would require new uh, innovative ways maybe through the plant variety protection uh, some kind of uh, initiative by which uh, uh, there can be intellectual property rights well protected because there are concerns also relating to that in the private sector uh, incentives by the government uh, which are in right direction i think why not punjab should come forward why not uh, up should come forward are they not having same problems more water requirement and so on and then we have all the potential of expanding area in the north eastern region and maize is a crop which is grown in all countries in the world even wheat is not grown in all countries and rice is also not grown in all countries 170 countries grow maize 
and india you can grow everywhere all states grow maize starting from kashmir to uh, go to arunachal pradesh or you go to uh, uh, you know south so what is that strategy then obviously we would require when we want to diversify and go towards maize and when you look at the example of most sustainable of uh, uh, production in the rainfed area it is maize soybean system in the us if if that system would have not been there possibly uh, they would have not been able to continue with that conservation agriculture system which they have and the same is now taking uh, place in case of brazil and also in argentina and australia is also following the similar approach so we will have to think uh, while we bring uh, the maize in rice wheat area we will have also to think of bringing uh, the maize uh, as well as soya bean in 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 those uh, poor exploitative uh, production systems having said this i said about uh, use of maize for biofuel the policy for gm crops is again is stopping us to achieve maybe in your paper you can say if we want to really achieve and make uh, maize a future crop of the country then uh, there is no other way but to go for gm approach biofortification let us remember dr vasal's contribution uh, i wish he was uh, participating today but he is in uh, today amritsar for some family function uh, i did talk to him uh, a great achievement indeed no no one would uh, we would at that time never imagine that this negative linkage will be broken between uh, the the lysine and uh, methane and uh, with the higher content of lysine and methane you are able to have double the production of uh, poultry and uh, pigs uh, in in just 20 to 25 days now this is the best fortified crop now we are talking of other fortified crops iron rich and here it is protein rich and our country is deficient of protein maximum protein malnourished children in india so uh, i i see great option you have already qpm hybrids but then the policy on qpm because qpm there is a penalty yield penalty which has to be understood which has to be so if it is 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 there no yield penalty on basmati prabhu yes but you is. have higher price for basmati yeah so why not higher price for when we are getting more protein for our you know uh, nutrition security in the country but that message has not gone we have to tell we have to bring different message and and that's what i see we are possibly losing an opportunity and we have to be more aggressive and for policy decisions the best message uh, should be informed knowledge through scientists reaching the policy makers so have we done that job ourselves is a challenge which has to be taken if we could not do before and and then no doubt we would require doubling of the uh, research support uh whatever is being given to maize or maize breeding program and coordinated program uh, this has to be further strengthened we will have to you have to define which center has to undertake what kind of activity which kind of hybrids uh, qpm or single cross or uh, even gm approach why not if not today i am sure maybe not today tomorrow gm food crops will have to come there is there is no option we can't go sri lanka way through organic farming i think we are going to but the question is 
we act only when there is crisis. When there was crisis, we had all support. At that time also, there was resistance for dwarf feats that it will, you know, uh, eliminate all our biodiversity and uh, uh, you, it, it is all going for maize and wheat and all other crops are getting uh, reduced uh, priority. So we have to, in that context, think of that. Uh, there has to be incentives for biofortified mage or QPM mage. Uh, we have to think in the context of uh, long-term policies. May, India has great potential for export of mage as feed and also for industry already there. But for feed, because we are very strategically located, and even China is importing, having higher area, they are also importing maximum of grains, whether it is, uh, they also consider soya bean as food crop. So uh, soya bean, maize, or even wheat for their feed purpose. So in that respect, we have great potential for the uh, South uh, uh, Eastern countries. And uh, we have another potential for value addition about which you had mentioned, Rakshit, and value addition in the context of going for baby corn, sweet corn, popcorn. Uh, Mexican food is becoming popular now in India. Tortillas, burritos, uh, the, the uh, you know popcorn which uh, Dr. Saidas provided me. I found the best one. My grandchildren are asking. Where is that popcorn seed? Uh, why can't we have some more? So, and, and, and young generation is all fond of that kind of food. So it will, uh, the food demand will increase on maize. We have also been eating in the past, but uh, we had our own difficulties in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, retaining the, the maize uh, flower for a long time and also making chapatis from me. But uh, with all these advancements and technologies uh, for value addition, uh, I have no doubt that uh, maize would be more used than what you are talking today uh, as a food crop. Uh, so having said all this, uh, I would like to conclude because uh, my time is already over, uh, that uh, let us, uh, Uh, rather decide today, because if not today, we will be late. And Foundation Day is the day which uh, can give us uh, some kind of uh, impetus uh, to, to do yet more if our previous achievements have been appreciated. So that appreciation is already there for us. Uh, many a times this appreciation doesn't come from above. And uh, uh, you, you have great strength. You have young generation, young scientists. Uh, they are, I think, more uh, energetic, uh, more knowledgeable and informed than possibly we were. We had to go to library and sit till midnight to get a journal. And here you get all information uh, sitting on your desk today. And uh, the technologies, the genome editing offers opportunity. Now, uh, when you look at recent achievement of uh, heart transplant in human being uh, from pig, pig heart was transplanted through GM pig, not otherwise. And that GM pig cause of uh, the genome editing of 10 genes Six genes were replaced of pig, and four genes of human were transferred there. So it was not just done like that. It is not so easy. But these opportunities, could we ever think of that the heart of pig will be also tomorrow available for human heart transplant? So sky is the limit. And uh, these opportunities are available. 
we are waiting for our guidelines for genome editing to be approved. I hope the government takes some decision soon. Uh, we all have to continue hammering that. Prabhu is doing it. And uh, Mahapatra is also trying hard. And uh, earlier, Renosu tried her best. But uh, that doesn't mean we should get disheartened. We should continue taking the right message to the policy makers. And they do listen. But only thing is whether we are putting right case before them and uh, convincing them that this is necessary. If you don't convince them that uh, tomorrow you need integrated nutrient management, then they would say that you don't need uh, any inorganic uh, fertilizer. You only can go for zero based natural farming or zero budget natural farming. So uh, it, it, it all depends on what kind of uh, message is given for policy decision. I had worked with policy makers. They do listen, but you have to have a case. If this hybrid project uh, was not uh, there, this hybrid project came from prime minister's office. It didn't come otherwise. And it came because there was objection which I had put on bulk import of uh, hybrid seed of vegetables and uh, cereals. The private sector has convinced the Rajiv Gandhi government and Rajiv Gandhi at that time that uh, why not you um, uh, make uh, the, the jump in your productivity by importing in bulk quantity. And, and uh, there was directive from PMO and uh, I was uh, in fact uh, summoned there that why you are objecting. And then when we argued, they said, okay, yes, you have a case to go in for your own uh, public system hybrids. So how much fund you need? And then just in one day's discussion was 40 crores at that time. And the project was started in 15 days. So it's not, I mean, that we cannot and uh, no doubt you need for that, uh, for making all these achievements. If we try to look finally, I would like to say the cradles of success are you need policy support, you need institution. We didn't have an institute on MAGE. I wanted it long back, but uh, somehow from IRI, you meet the MAGE bidders never wanted to move out. So uh, I, I just couldn't help. One would not grow under Benyan tree. And uh, that's how I shifted wheat to canal and I had a displeasure from Dr. Borlock, but then I convinced him later. And he said that this was the right decision. So you have an institute, now you have human resource. Now you have to have more research support you have to build partnership with private sector and uh, you have to have your future goals very clearly defined. And I see that uh, because I, 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 I grew with mage as a young boy. In the field, it was only mage which was we eating at that time or, or bajra, but mage you could eat right in the field uh, by uh, just uh, harvesting and popping them. So uh, this is a great crop. It has opportunities. Let us uh, uh, see that in future, if not today, in, in I think 21st century, uh, I am sure maize would emerge as probably the most important uh, food crop in our country. When I say food crop, it is also food for animals, so food, feed, and whatever. So it's used. So maize will emerge as an important crop in, in, in our country because there is no other way out. And, and we have to go uh, to support it all in all. So with this, I would like to, Dr. Prabhu, thank you, and also Dr. Rakshit and uh, all other colleagues. And I uh, apologize for it taking a little long, 
but uh, my purpose was to catalyze you because we cannot now at this stage achieve all these what i have talked it is all to be achieved through you thank you very much